Let's get started with the Sun Tracker and its tripod stand. Open the box and lift out the Sun Tracker. Be careful, it weighs about 20 kilograms. Unpack the parts and tools. All the items are listed in the manual on the DVD. The tripod stand is packed in a separate box. Screw in the two adjustable feet such that they protrude the same amount as the fixed foot. The threads have silicone grease on them. The Kip and Sony logo on the tripod must point to the east within plus or minus 10 degrees. Place the sun tracker on the tripod so that the e-label on its base lines up with the logo on the tripod. Screw the three tripod bolts with plain washers hand tight into the base of the sun tracker. Level the Solis 2 by adjusting the tripod feet to bring the bubble within the black circle. Now we will continue with the installation of the sun sensor kit. There are no instructions with the kit, they are included in the Solus 2 manual. Pass the three mounting screws through the forward perheliometer mounting clamp with a nylon shoulder washer fitted into each side of the clamp. Lock the three mounting screws tightly with the nuts. Fit the three compression springs and three more shoulder washers. Slide on the sun sensor and locate it on the washer shoulders. Fit the last three shoulder washers into the sun sensor and hand tighten the three locking nuts. Tighten the three nuts to compress the springs. It is important that the distance shown is between 20.5 and 21.5 mm for all three mounting points. Do not connect the sun sensor cable to the SOLIS 2 yet. All you need is the hexagonal wrench supplied with the SOLIS 2. Remove the lower screws from the two mounting clamps and loosen the upper screws. Slide in the perheliometer and position it such that it does not touch the sun sensor mountings. Rotate the perheliometer to align it vertically with the connector at the bottom. Fit the lower screws with their shake-proof washers and then tighten all four screws firmly. Use a screwdriver to open the wooden box and lay out all the parts and tools. Start with fixing the lower pivot bar to the bottom of the Solus 2. Slide a shading drive arm through the perheliometer mounting clamps with the counterweight downwards and fix it to the side plate. Fit the T-bar to the drive arm using two shoulder washers and a flat nylon washer. The six screws in the T-bar cross arm must be facing forward. Tighten the locking nut until there is no free play 
but the T-bar can move easily. Screw the second shading drive arm to the mounting plate. The two set screws for clamping the zenith plate to the shaft must be facing downwards and fit loosely. Connect the T-bar to the drive arm and adjust the locking nut as before. Ensure that the two drive arms are parallel and then tighten the two screws firmly. Connect the shading support arm to the T-bar as shown. Adjust the nylon locking nut such that there is no free play, but the support arm can move easily. Make sure that you have fitted it to the correct side of the T-bar arm. Connect the support arm to the correct side of the pivot bar, as shown. Adjust the locking nut as before. Now you can fit the top mounting plate, ensuring that it's the correct way up for the countersunk screws. The positioning of the shading balls is done after the radiometers have been installed on the mounting plate. The fitting kit for the radiometer is included in the paranometer box. There are three pairs of holes in the top mounting plate for installing radiometers without ventilation units. Note that the connector must be facing backwards. It is important that the nylon shoulder washers are fitted to the fixing screws. Run up the nuts loosely. Check that the Solus 2 is still level after fitting the shading ball assembly and readjust it if necessary. Hold down the radiometer and adjust its feet to bring the bubble within the black circle. Tighten the two fixing screws and check that the radiometer level is still correct. Complete the mechanical installation by clipping on the sunscreens. The cables will be fitted later. Finally, finish the assembly with the shading balls. Decide which radiometers will be shaded from the direct solar beam. Use the hexagonal wrench to loosen the T-bar set screws. Slide the rods through the bar to leave approximately 16 cm below the cross arm. Tighten the set screws to secure the shading ball rods. The final adjustment of the shading balls will be done later using direct sunlight. Ventilation unit improves performance and reduces maintenance of your paranometer or regiometer. The fixing screws, washers and hexagonal wrench are included in the ventilation unit box. Loosen the two knurled clamp screws and remove the cover before installation. The CVF4 uses two pairs of holes in the Solus 2 top mounting plate that are wider apart and further back than the unventilated radiometer holes. Mount the ventilation unit with the pen to the rear and ensure that the fixing screws are tight. 
Place the radiometer on the CVF4 base plate with the cable connector facing to the rear. It is important that the nylon shoulder washers are fitted to the fixing screws. Run in the screws loosely. Level the radiometer as before, tighten the two fixing screws and check that the radiometer level is still correct. Complete the mechanical installation by fitting the ventilation unit cover and hand tighten the two knurled clamp screws. The cables will be fitted later. Because the radiometer is higher when fitted to a ventilation unit, the shading balls need to be raised as shown. Adjust the rods to leave approximately 7 cm below the cross arm and tighten the set screws. Remove the clip-on black grill. Behind the grill is a coarse mesh filter and then a fine foam filter. Clean or replace the foam filter, refit the mesh and clip the grill back into place. The Solus can be powered using the AC or DC power or both. Select the correct connector and check the manual for cable specifications and connection information. After the power is connected, the power LED will turn green and the status LED will blink red. The Solis will then perform a number of movements to check its home position and proper cable length, as you can see in high speed. Finally, it will start sun tracking. To adjust the exact east-west alignment of the Solus, it has to be rotated on its tripod. The perheliometer has two small alignment holes. The light through the front hole should make a light spot around the rear hole. Once the light spot on the perheliometer is aligned, you can fasten the three bolts from the tripod. When the sun is present, you can check and correct the height of the shading bolts. The sensors should be in the center of the shadows. Tighten the set screws firmly. The alignment of the sun sensor can only be carried out with sufficient sun and when the alignment of the solids is complete. Check the correct spacing between the three mounting points to be approximately 21 mm. Connect the sun sensor cable to the bottom of the solis and screw the locking ring hand tight. The status LED will start blinking green, indicating the tracker is no longer properly aligned. Check where the light spot on the perheliometer has moved and adjust the locking nuts from the sun sensor to correct its position. The top nut is used to move the light spot vertically. The two lower nuts move the spot horizontally. Remember, it takes 10 seconds for the solus to respond to each adjustment. 